Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a graphic novel that I read. That is right, I am back on that graphic novel grind due to a challenge from Lucas over at The Bits of Lit. Uh, I made a challenge video a while back. Go take a look at that. Or he made a challenge video and I responded. Uh, so check out those videos. And also be sure to check out his video as we um, we talk about this book that we're going to talk about, this graphic novel. It is a graphic novel about uh, creatures of the swamp and also plants taking over the world or something like that. I am referring to Swamp Thing. Uh, volume one of Swamp Thing uh, by Alan Moore with art by Stephen Bissett, John Totalben, and a couple of other people. This book was published in 1983, and for those who don't know, uh, I've talked about uh, Alan Moore on the channel before, so I don't need to go into great detail, but he is a, uh, a writer who's known for some pretty um, pretty well-regarded works in, um, in comic book literature, including Watchmen, From Hell, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, V for Vendetta, and The Killing Joke. Some of those I've covered on this channel before, so you can go look at those videos if you want to find out what I thought on, of them. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much enjoy Alan Moore's work, even though he can be um, a bit vague or kind of... Uh, not vague, but um, focusing on just weird tangents at times in his stories, uh, which happened in V for Vendetta and uh, Watchmen, uh, and also happens a little bit here as well. Uh, but when he when he's focused, when he's doing uh, character work, uh, I don't think he can really be beat by anyone apart from maybe Neil Gaiman, and that's that's pretty high praise right there. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's talk about this book. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So volume one of Swamp Thing uh, focuses, of course, on the character of Swamp Thing. He, uh, he is Alex Holland, or so he thinks. Um, and at the start of the story, it kind of uh, starts a media res with him having just defeated the villain Arcane in a previous edition. Uh, and both Swamp Thing and his friends who help out uh, Abby and, and Matt and, and a couple others, they're dealing with the aftermath of, of, of what, what has just happened. Um, at the same time, the government has decided to intervene because they want to stop the Swamp Thing, among many other things. Uh, so they hunt down Swamp Thing uh, with flamethrowers and guns, and they manage to shoot him in the head. And that presumably, seemingly, kills Swamp Thing. His body is taken to Washington. And the general calls and Jason Woodrow, otherwise known as the Floronic Man, and they have him examine the body. Uh, and he finds out a, a number of strange things, such as organs that don't seem to be useful for anything, um, just a, a body structure that doesn't quite make sense, uh, uh, happening from an explosion that, by all rights, should have killed Alec Holland. Uh, but as he examines the body more and more, he finally figures out that Alec Holland died. Um, uh, but what Swamp Thing is, is the memory of Alec Holland, uh, specifically the, the swamp creatures and the, the animals and the, and the plants, uh, because of the chemicals that Alec Holland was working on, they, they mixed with the memory of, of Alec and, and meshed together in a weird way to basically create a uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, and um, because the general, uh, you know, upset Jason Woodrow, he reawakens uh, Swamp Thing, who's not actually dead because you can't kill what isn't an actual person. And Swamp Thing basically hunts down and kills the general in a, in a very good panel of the, the comic. 
Uh, and then the Swamp Thing heads back to Louisiana, where he begins dreaming. Like, his friend Abby tries to re reawaken him to no real success initially. Uh, he he thinks about how he's not actually Swamp Thing, or not actually Alec Holland anymore, and tries to reconcile with that. And at the same time, uh, Jason Woodrow, uh, the Floronic Man, is doing experiments on him, which ultimately ends in uh, Woodrow uh, sort of killing off Hit the would you side of him, the person side of him that is, uh, you know, the in control of things, and now he's just pure plant, um, or or controlled by plants in some way, and he begins going on a rampage where he kills a number of people and basically says he's going to alter the Earth's atmosphere, in an effort to um, to basically kill all the humans and stop their damaging of the planet. At this time, Swamp Thing reawakens and sets about uh, restoring justice to what's going on with uh, <laughs> with with the Floronic Man. Uh, we see uh, the Justice League in the background, um, kind of helpless and not really sure of how they're going to solve this problem. Noting like uh, Superman looks out for Metropolis, and uh, you know like. Green Lantern looks out for Coast City, among other things. Uh, but who looks out for the swamps of Louisiana? Uh, which is a very fascinating question. Um, but uh, yeah, Swamp Thing intervenes and manages to beat Woodrow, which the Justice League is happy about, although they're unsure of what exactly took place there. Um, and then the, the comic sort of shifts to other enemies that... Uh, Swamp Thing fights, including the Monkey King and Jason Blood or Atrigan the, the Demon, uh, which Swamp Thing manages to defeat and help children out in, in the process. And as the comic comes to an end, uh, it focuses on Matt Cable, um, Abby, um, Ab Abigail Cable, who is Swamp Thing's sort of like best friend, uh, her, uh, her alcoholic boyfriend, and it seems like he gets possessed by some sort of demon as the story ends. Surely that will lead into uh, Swamp Thing Volume 2. In terms of analysis, much like with many Alan Moore writings, he does provide us with uh, a little bit to think about here. Uh, the main um, uh, theme of, of really Volume 1 here seems to be identity and, and consciousness. Uh, Alan Moore post poses the question, who or what? is Swamp Thing, uh, which seems to follow um, Swamp Thing around, at least for the first half of the uh, of the graphic novel of Volume 1. Uh, is Swamp Thing Alec Holland, um, who died, or seemingly died in the explosion, only to come back as Swamp Thing? It would make sense since Swamp Thing has his memories, and um, Alec Holland was working with the chemicals that allowed Swamp Thing to become a thing in the first place. Uh, that would certainly seem like what people are getting at, and it would seem like what previous editions of Swamp Thing have, got, have gotten at, where it seems like uh, Alec Holland is Swamp Thing, is, is a hero of the swamps, and is desperately trying to regain his humanity. But uh, what Alan Moore poses here, the question is... Uh, is, is Swamp Thing actually the memory of, of Alec Holland? Like, the chemical process worked its way through the swamps and mixed with the memories of uh, Alec Holland and, his, and the vague recollection of his consciousness, and what it created was a swamp creature that had the memory of Alec and behaved much in the same way he would have behaved, but is actually a different creature entirely. That's a very fascinating question to really pose uh and very philosophical too like what is the nature of identity what is the nature of consciousness is that what what are what even are humans are we who we say we are or are we just the the con a conglomerate of neurons and memories that say oh i'm mr nothing or i'm this person or that person uh but there's nothing truly connecting us to that identity over time uh, I, maybe uh, Alan Moore isn't really like going that far into it, but it does. He does present us with a lot to think about that leads us on that path. And I think another important question that is asked is: Would it matter either way uh, who Swamp Thing is? Would it matter if he was Alec? Would it matter if it was just uh, some entire like swamp creature conglomerate sort of thing just working together in harmony? 
And I think I think it doesn't actually matter. Like it matter like Swamp Thing matters, of course, but the person behind Swamp Thing doesn't matter because ultimately Swamp Thing is something new. Um, sure, Swamp Thing might try to regain his humanity and he might be successful in the future, but um, it doesn't matter if he's Alec or if he's a memory of Alec. He's he's still behaving in a in a superhero-y manner. Um, and he's he's working to protect the swamp and protect the world from from various evil people, and that's what matters most. Uh, that he's the creature of the shadows, willing to fight back the other shadows. Uh, maybe not so much his identity. I think that's a that's a very fascinating message to put forward on the part of um, uh, on the part of Alan Moore, especially when so many comics focus on that aspect of of identity and and um, and trying to reveal like who a superhero truly is. Alan Moore is also working with an eco narrative in this in this story. Uh, uh, especially uh, as we learn more about Jason Woodrow and the Floronic Man. Uh, it seems that uh, Jason Woodrow is trying to deliver justice for the plants. A very noble goal, and especially in the 1980s, 1970s, around the time this was written, um, that's something you would have seen a lot more with a lot more people focused on the environment. And it's something you see even now. A lot of stories focus on trying to restore the harm or restore the planet to its former glory prior to when humans were doing harm to it. Uh, and Woodrow is very much representative of that uh, of that story of the eco terrorist trying to uh, to uh, prevent further harm to uh, the planet. There's another there's an interesting quote from this. Allow me to read it to you. I am the pain and the bitterness of the woods. I am come to announce the green millennium. I am one with the wilderness, it, its will works through me, for I asked of it, saying, what would you have me do? And it said, purify, and it said, destroy, destroy the creatures that would destroy us, that would destroy the ecosphere and their poisons and bulldozers, cut them down like blighted wood, let us have another green world, which is a very, a very good monologue uh, on the part of Woodrow, getting at um, how humans are pose a great harm to uh, the world around it. Uh, but Swamp Thing, for his part, points out the flaws in this plan, that once humans are gone, like, um, once you kill pretty, like, because if you kill humans, you're going to kill a whole bunch of animals, too. Once all those things are gone, like, what is going to provide life to the plants? Because the plants won't have their carbon dioxide anymore that they need because the humans are all gone. They'll just have oxygen, which which plants don't use. Uh, and the, and that's funny because Woodrow reals the flaw, realizes the flaw, flaw in his plan, as does the as do the plants that are controlling him. They kind of recede and and stop trying that. It's interesting that Swamp Thing works the plan out without really having to fight. Um, uh, Woodrow, in the same way, he just points out that uh, maybe destruction isn't the answer to a problem that was caused by destruction in the in, in the first place. Alan Moore also talks a little bit about uh, shadows and the unknown in this story, specifically in the beginning when uh, when um, uh, when Swamp Thing is running from the government, running from the soldiers. Uh, noting that it's getting harder for Swamp Thing to hide, that they're uh, that they're shining lights into the, the the dark corners of the world now, and there's no real real place for Swamp Thing, or as he laments, there's no real place for his former villain Arcane either, because there's no place to hide like like he used to. Uh, it, it calls for adaptation, which I don't think this comic ever really like answers to because even once um uh swamp thing is resurrected he doesn't um he doesn't really adapt to anything he still hides in the shadows like maybe he makes himself a little more known to the people but he's still a mystery to because he's hiding out in the swamps so um I, I do think it's an interesting idea i think that alan moore could have um could have developed it a little bit more also, a number of other great things in this um, in this volume in volume one of this is the great art, which you've probably seen around this video already. I, I do think it's a uh, very exciting. A lot of close-ups on Swamp Thing's face and highlighting the the monstrosity of both Floronic Man as well as, as Swamp Thing, which I which I truly appreciate. It adds to the horror nature uh, of this graphic novels, which you don't typically see with with comic books. Sort of highlighting the. Um, the sort of horror that comes with being a, a vicious swamp monster thing. Uh, but one thing I didn't like about this comic um, was Matt Cable, the character of Matt Cable, 
really Abby, uh, Abigail Cable as well. Um, I didn't really understand what the point of Matt was. It just seemed like um, like Alan Moore was making him a drunk for reasons that weren't quite clear. And then um, like him just doing a series of bad things leading to him getting into a drunk driving accident and uh, uh, becoming possessed by a demon. And I don't know where that was going. Uh, didn't make a lot of sense to me. And I'm sure Alan Moore is going to, you know, develop it a little bit more in the second volume uh, in, in future issues. But it, it, it just seems like a lot of build up to something that's never really talked about or discussed uh, in this in this edition. So I think that that really it really seems like he's an unnecessary character or one that's easily forgettable because his his um, his arc doesn't seem readily apparent in this in this volume. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Swamp Thing Volume 1 by Alan Moore. Uh, I talked with Lucas over at the Bits of Lit and um, it seems like he bought the whole uh, the whole series and I only got Volume 1. So I'm going to have to, um, we're, we're, we're both going to like explore more of the series as time goes on. Um, uh, but I, I really enjoyed this. I definitely recommend it to you out there, uh, especially in the first half of this uh, graphic novel. I thought it was really solid, really focused, um, good at good at getting at horror, good at getting at the characters. It's where Alan Moore really shines. He's a wonderful writer, um, and I, I'm sure I don't need to remind everyone for the upteenth time, but here I am reminding everyone. So go seek this out if you can. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, this has been a booktube challenge. Make sure you go check out Lucas's uh, video over at the Bits of Lit. Let him know that I probably won the challenge and he should more than likely be mailing me the, the golden shell any day now, as that is the representation of the championship. Uh, or the Book 2 Federation Championship. So I look forward to finally getting that. Uh, if you read this before, you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about Swamp Thing. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about Alan Moore if they don't already know, uh, and Swamp Thing if they haven't read this, uh, this particular uh, story yet. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and Louisiana swamp travels. Farewell.